Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I haven't posted any videos in the last week. I've just taken a little bit of time off but now I am back creating my videos as normal and this is then going to be the first video for 2021. So I just want to say before we get started I hope everybody had a really great Christmas and a happy new year and let's hope that this year is going to be much better. I didn't really get any crafty supplies for Christmas this year and I didn't really take a look at anything that was in any January sales or end of year sales but I was in town earlier this week um, and I did pop into the wicks and I seen then these uh, crafters companion die and stamp sets and I've seen these a couple of times but they were reduced down to two pound uh, so I thought I would pick them up so I picked up the four that they actually had in store and you can see that you've got this uh, metal word uh, die which will partly cut from cardstock and then you do have a stamp or two to be able to create a fuller sentiment. The four packs that I picked up, the die words, we've got thanks, hugs, love and hello. So I don't know if there's any more in the range uh, but I just picked up all of the ones that the, the works had in stock. So we're going to create three cards. So we're going to do uh, one design and we're going to create three cards with this. So to start off, I've got some Craft Perfect Oyster Grey. So I've shown you this in previous videos. And this is then a weaved pattern cardstock. So that cardstock is going to be used to die cut our wood and it's going to be our top layer. And I've also cut some Crafters Companion watercolour cardstock. I'm going to be doing uh, some stenciling and using the uh, Nouveau embellishment mousse on this. That's why I've picked a watercolour cardstock. The card size we're going to be creating today is 5 by 7 so I've cut all of my cardstock down beforehand and I've cut it all to 5 inch wide. I'm not too worried about the height because I want to make sure that I get my pieces to overlap so you can't see where the join is and where it sort of ends. So all I'm doing is lining up all of my cards so you can see that I've got my weaved cardstock um, on top and I'm just roughly placing where I want my die cut to go like I said so it does overlap and what I'm going to do is take my t-square ruler and this is then going to help me to get a really straight die cut and I'm just going to use some washi tape just to pop this in place so I was going to have it in the center but I decided to go off center just a little bit I find that it, it almost uh, takes out the pressure of having to make sure that you get it in the center um, and it just sort of adds a little bit more interest to the card. So I'm just popping some um, washi tape on this just to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna be running this through my Gemini die cutting machine. So the way this die works is it's not going to cut the full thanks word out, it's actually going to leave it attached to our cardstock. So it means then that the H, the N and the S are still going to be attached and the other letters are just going to be kind of floating. And you'll be able to see that here once I've pulled the die off the cardstock. So hopefully you can see that there's two um, additional cut lines coming from the H and the S. And this is so then you can snip into it if you want to. That's what I'm going to do here with a pair of scissors. And I'm going to create a straight edge. And then I'm going to have my thanks obviously still attached but floating above it. Uh, or you can buy additional dies from Crafters Companion, which will then sort of cut out uh, the area above it so in a circle I think there's a couple of different shapes that you can uh, get as well um, but I really love just how this looks it means for me that I could do something really bold and beautiful with lots of colour um, for a portion of the card and then I could leave the rest of the card plain if I wanted to um, and I just think that kind of design is really really beautiful it means then you're not going to have anything that's kind of too overpowering so you can kind of get a gist of how this is going to look so I've cut three of these thanks panels uh, for all three of my cards and now I'm going to move on to uh, creating a back frame. So again, like I said at the beginning, I wanted to do uh, three different cards but all following that same design. And the way that I'm going to um, vary these cards is by using different stencils. So I've shown you these kind of stencils before. These are by Craft Sensation. Uh, I picked these up from the range. They were really inexpensive. I think there's sort of five or six uh, stencils in each pack um, and it just... It was really great for building my stash and just having sort of different stencils that I could use in sort of lots of different kinds of patterns. So what I'm going to do is use some Nouveau embellishment mousse um, and I'm going to obviously put that through this stencil. Uh, so what I've done is I've taken my watercolour cardstock and that is why I picked the watercolour cardstock uh, is so that my card doesn't warp once I use that Nouveau pay up mousse. And I've put my stencil down, I've lined it up with the grids on my grid mat, uh, and then I've lined up my cardstock, and then I'm just taping it down with some washi tape, and then I can flip this over, and then my stencil is all ready to go. 
So before I actually use this Nuvo mousse, I'm just going to prep it a little bit just to make it easier to use. So you can see that just within the pot, I'm just kind of working it a little bit, trying to soften it up, um, just using one of my Nuvo spatulas in here. Uh, this almost has the consistency like butter. And again, when you work butter, it just kind of softens it up a little bit. And like I said, it's just going to make it easier to use with this stencil. So I am using my glass mat. You, I have already cut my cardstock down to the size that I want it to be. One of the maybe easier ways of doing this is to use a bigger piece and then trim it down afterwards. Um, but all this means is I just need to go right to the edge of this uh, cardstock through the stencil. So using a glass mat or something that's going to be easy to clean is definitely the way you want to go. Um, but by using this glass mat, it just meant that the cleanup was so easy. I'm really generously uh, spreading this across the stencil so a lot of this is going to come off again and go back into the pot so you're not wasting any um, but you want to make sure that you fill in all of the gaps you know from your stencil you want to make sure you get that full design. Sometimes I forget that you know you can use stencils for lots of different kinds of techniques it doesn't just have to be for ink blending through there's so many different kinds of uh, pastes and mousses and different products on the market that you can use with stencils this is my first uh, experience using the Nouveau embellishment mousse and um, I've got the glimmer paste as well which I have shown in previous videos um, and it's just a really nice change just to get a little bit messy and create something with a little bit of texture and again then just something a little bit different. So you want to be careful when you're taking the excess uh, off your stencil that you're not taking it back out of the design itself. You're just taking what's on top but the art is really knowing kind of when to stop. So again because I've cut my cardstock to the size that I want and I've, I've gone right to the edges I just need to be careful now when pulling up my stencil but I do have those uh, washi tape tabs that I could also use but I just found a section that didn't have any of the mousse on uh, just to hold that cardstock down. So you can see just to the left at the bottom there is a small section uh, where the mousse has uh, gone through the stencil. Um, I'm not really too worried about that because hopefully I'm going to be able to uh, cover that up with my thanks die cut but I still think the rest of it looks really beautiful and especially in this really lovely mint tea colour. So I do only have one colour in this uh, Nouveau embellishment mousse range, which is this mint tea colour. So rather than showing you the whole process of doing all three of these backgrounds, I'm literally just going to show you the stencil designs that I picked. So you can see this one is different again from the previous one. This is a little bit more masculine. So I do want to use these thanks cards. So I definitely had that in mind when I was picking these stencil designs uh, that I wanted to use. So this is then the third stencil that I picked. So this has a little bit of an art deco feel to it and it does look really beautiful with this embellishment mousse because there is just a really great sheen to it. The only issue I had with this stencil and the first stencil I used is it had some sections um, that if you weren't careful, you could kind of lift the stencil up and get the product underneath it, which I did have an issue like I showed you with the first stencil. And I do get that a tiny bit with this one as well. So you do just need to be careful if you are using your stencils to make sure um, that you're kind of going in the direction that the stencil is so you can see that I'm coming um, down from the top of this stencil um, I don't want to go back on itself because I don't want to then get some of that product underneath those really sort of fiddly bits um, in the center of that design so always be careful when you are using sort of more delicate stencils like this. So here you can see our three finished stencil backgrounds. So I have let these dry and I'm just using a dry paper towel just to kind of wipe over uh, the edges in case there is any hardened sort of bits of that embellishment mousse that I just want to uh, sort of knock off the cardstock. But you can see that that is in the light and just how beautiful that shine is. It's really subtle because of the colour that we've used and I think it's really, really understated. But I really love then the uh, stencil patterns that we've picked. I think it just creates such beautiful backgrounds. But now we can go ahead and get started actually assembling our cards together. So the first thing to do is pop some double sided tape onto my card base. So I'm doing this on the card rather than on the panels themselves. I want to make sure that I get that tape right to the edges because I am going to be sticking my background uh, right to the edge of the card. So I'm not going to have that white border um, around the edge like I tend to do with my cards normally. So that's why I've cut my card stock to the exact size that I needed it to be to begin with. Um, any excess uh, you know, bits that's hanging over, they shouldn't be, but means we can cut those down afterwards. 
So I'm just covering the card base and again I'm going to do this for all three of my blank cards. So I'm just going to take off the back end to the double sided tape then we can pop down our stenciled panel and I do think this just looks absolutely fabulous and um, it reminds me of wallpaper um, and yeah I think it's just come out really really nicely. So this is the only panel that is just very slightly too big um, so I will trim that down and again then I'm just knocking off any sort of excess uh, of that hardened mousse that's just on the side but yeah I think this is going to look really great. Now I can bring in my thanks panel for the bottom and you can really see how this is going to come together. So I decided to go with something a little bit more muted, a little bit more um, natural colour palette. But I think this would look so fabulous um, having just a white bottom panel and then having just a real burst of colour uh, for that top piece. But um, yeah, I really love how this is coming together. So I'm not actually going to put any tape or anything on the thanks. Um, so you can see there the tape that I was using is just a little bit too thick to go on it. Um, I do have thinner tape but I just thought it would be a little bit nicer because I'm going to be uh, putting this flat to the card. I thought it would be a little bit nicer just having that little bit of movement within that thanks with not having that kind of stuck down. I think this would look really beautiful as well by propping this panel up with some foam pads and um, it'll give just a little bit of shadow behind that uh, thanks word. Um, so definitely when I use these again I think I'm definitely going to do that but I wanted to just create it a little bit flat for today uh, but yeah creating that um, sort of raised panel I think would just really elevate the card design just a little bit more. So now we can move on to assembling the second card so again using the double sided tape on the card base itself just popping on then the stenciled background so again I think this is just coming together really beautifully and then we can pop on our thanks panel as well. So I do have the thanks panels they are slightly different in size because I was trying to get the most out of my cardstock and um, I didn't want to use new pieces for each one to get them exactly the same because I wasn't really too worried they're all going to different people so no one's going to know whether they're exactly the same or not um, but yeah just trying to make sure I get the most out of my cardstock and sort of not wasting um, you know very much but then that's our thanks panel gone onto this second card and again I just think that looks really really beautiful so for our last card, we've got then this sort of Art Deco style stenciled panel um, done again in that exact same way. But I do think these just work so well. They just look like sort of different kinds of um, wallpaper to me. And I just think they look really great. So the other thing that I really love is, and you can see it here by the stark whiteness of my actual card base to then that stenciled panel, is the Crafter's Companion watercolour cardstock. It's not that bright white. It's a little bit more um, creamy and I think that just works so much better with our design. So that is the main bulk of the cards put together so you can see them here and you can see that shine of that background and I think these just look really really great. Um, you can see again like I said that little bit of um, difference in height that we've got but I'm super happy with how these are coming along. So the next thing we're going to do just to finish these off is I want to use one of the um, stamps that came with this uh, obviously stamp and die set. That's just going to finish off our sentiment and then we're going to add just a little bit of embellishment. The stamp I've picked to finish our sentiment is a bunch, so it will read thanks a bunch. And I decided to stamp this. I didn't want to do it in a black. Again, I wanted to kind of follow that colour palette, that bit more muted colour palette we've got. So I picked the Distress Ink Pomace Stone colour. So this is kind of like a dark browny grey colour. Um, and I thought this would just work a lot better. And I'm stamping this again onto that watercolour cardstock because it is a little bit creamier um, than the sort of stark white, you know, regular cardstock. So I stamped this three times. So you can see I popped it into my stamping platform just so I could stamp it to make sure I get a good impression. Uh, and then I can go ahead and just cut this out using then my mini guillotine. And just so this didn't look sort of too bulky on the card, I'm using a small corner cutter um, and I'm just doing two corners rounded and it's going to be two opposites. Uh, just again to add a little bit more uh, design to the card itself. To add just a little bit of dimension and again a little bit more interest to the card, I'm going to prop these up onto some foam pads and then it's going to sit just underneath the thanks. So then our card will read thanks a bunch. So again, I didn't want to use anything too stark white and I didn't want to use then a real black ink. Um, I think using this sort of dark grey colour, I think it just finishes it off really nicely. 
So it's really important just to get that uh, sort of placement just right. So I don't kind of press down too hard to begin with uh, until I'm sure that that is where I want to pop it. So now I can just go ahead and pop the uh, sentiments on uh, the rest of the cards. So again, I'm following that same sort of bit, just putting it on the right hand side. To finish our cards off, we're going to add just a little bit of embellishment. So we're going to add some clear drops. So these drops are by Dovecraft. So these are a slightly cheaper alternative to something like a Nouveau drop. Um, they're really great if you want to start off using these products. Maybe if you're not uh, sure that you'll get on with it, you're not 100% confident because that is definitely me. So I don't use them very often. I've got a few different colours, but I never really get it to look how I want it to. And I do sometimes struggle with the placement of them. You see people who can kind of just do it and they get really great placements, you know, odd numbers and just in the right place. And I do kind of struggle a little bit with that. But I guess the more you do it, uh, sort of the easier that becomes. But I have seen people use things like Nubo drops and that. And after they've done it, they tap it gently onto a surface. And this is the first time I've ever actually done it and it makes all the difference. It kind of flattens the um, the drop out a little bit and it just kind of evens it up and it, it just makes all the difference. So I'm not sure why I've never done it before, even though I've seen people do it, I've never done it and I really do think it makes a difference. So I'm definitely going to try and use these just a little bit more often. So these are the finished cards and I really love how these have turned out. I love that muted colour palette and I think it works perfectly for this design. So this is going to be part of a new series for 2021 called Three Cards, One Design. I really want to show that you can take one product and you can stretch it and create something different, whether it's completely different or just a variation like I've done in this. So be sure to look out for those future videos. So that's it for this video. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do so so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thanks very much for watching and happy crafting.